Looking for a continuous reading high accuracy colorimeter with fast, accurate, low light measurement, all at a valued price? Then Sencor has the solution you've been looking for. The public lobby of Barry Diller's IAC Global Headquarters is home to two of the world's largest and most unique projection video screens. Developing a high-definition screen that would be suitable for architectural applications, large displays using multiple projectors, and high ambient light conditions at this site was no easy task. Stewart Film Screen came up with a solution, Starglass. Up until Infocom 2006, Aeroglass had been the product of choice. The entire design team, uh, including Stewart Film Screen, McCann Systems, and IAC, uh, had settled up on that product. However, Starglass, which was being premiered at Infocom, uh, really turned the tide at that point, um, really becoming the product of choice, considering the application, the public space, and the fact that the, uh, the laminated glass product gave us so many more benefits. Starglass, a one-of-a-kind screen, allows AV integrators to bring their own vision to an installation while providing image quality that only Stewart Film Screen can deliver. The Starglass product has been the strongest and most successful installation Stewart Film Screen has ever had. We're able to provide the product on time. Uh, we were able to provide high-quality product. It's the largest high-definition video wall in the world. The customer is extremely happy, and we expect many, many new orders to come in the future for this fantastic new product called Starglass. Starglass from Stewart Film Screen, a whole new world for all to see. Welcome back. This is Gary Kay and you're watching Sound and Communications Viewpoint, and we're talking about video conferencing with John Swoyer. John, when we left off, we were talking about HD video conferencing. Is there still a place for SD video? Is there still a place for regular old video conferencing? I think there's a place for uh, standard definition video conferencing, but I would, for the most part, say not at the high end. I think what you're gonna, your way you're going to find is that um, from a cost perspective, um, the cost of the cameras themselves, there's a place for standard definition video conferencing that needs to be able to communicate with high definition video conferencing. So the, so the two will always commingle, if you will. But the bottom line is, for instance, um, desktop video conferencing. Uh, the cost of these cameras, people want a price point that's $150 or, or that sub $200 market. Um, so you're not going to have an HD video conferencing camera, a small camera that's going to fit there. So I think you're going to see standard def um, still play in the market with HD endpoints, though, as part of that. Uh, when, when, you're, when you're talking about high definition, though, um, as far as systems are concerned today, as in deploying new systems, this, the, as in the higher systems, as in $4,000 and above, if you will, they're in essence the same cost as standard def systems are at this point. So, the well, I, I, I actually, since you, I would like to come back to that point because mm -hmm. I'm not sure I totally agree that the costs are the same because high definition equipment is a lot more expensive than. But I want to, I want to. You touched on on uh, desktop video conferencing. Yeah. Um, with products like what Microsoft has and what Intel's incorporated in the new microprocessors, and of course like Apple's iChat AV, which kids are basically video. What they're doing, our kids today are doing what we were bragging about doing for forty thousand dollars fifteen years ago, and they're doing it on a on a on a laptop. Um, how is this going to affect the future of our market? Well. Uh, from the future of our market, obviously, you've got those users out there that are very, uh, are obviously very accepting to video, to video overall. So I think that's great for the industry itself. So, so, so it'll bring up, it'll Absolutely. bring a whole bunch of new users into the market. Absolutely, that are used to it. Okay. That, that are regular, everyday users. Absolutely. Okay. So, so then the hope is that they'll, they'll want the higher quality. That's correct. Okay. But do you? And they're see always going to want the higher quality. But right now, it's standard def. Right. Okay. Do you? But do you see that as a threat? Do you see that? Coming at you, at, uh, coming at the market from the side as a threat, and potentially usurping all of this uh, infrastructure that we've invested in as a as a commercial AV integrator, for example. No, nope, I don't see the threat as all. It's a, if, if if anything, it um, it helps educate and and obviously propel the market. The more users, the better, because it's it becomes an accepted part of our technology. This is now finally a technology that's been fully adopted, whether it's the, at the very young or as we as we head up into the upper echelons. All right, so back to HD video conferencing. Um, 
I've seen applications from talking heads all the way through literally life-size video conferencing people where you're talking to somebody who's in life-size proportions across right. the table or you're watching an operation right. um, from a far site that, that blew me away. Right. Um, what, what is the most popular application? Or is, is it still, is it, does it, do the applications determine the cost or does it cost the same amount of money regardless of the application? That's a great question. As a matter of fact, there's a tremendous amount of hype with what you called that life-size life application. And actually, it's, uh, another term for it is telepresence. People mm -hmm. are really looking at this technology as telepresence, meaning that um, you, you have a mirror image of the other side. In essence, not fooling, but giving the giving the, the the appearance or this immersive experience of being in the same room with this technology. Um, I, I, in my opinion, I think the jury's still out on telepresence or life size applications. This is, by the way, this is not something that's um, that's that, that that's a that's a new concept or a new idea. Um, there were there were uh, compression labs or CLI resellers 12, 13, 14 years ago that came out with the exact same concept and it really didn't take off. The question is, is does, it, does the telepresence or life-size model actually scale? There's challenges with that, the number of uh, attendees that you can actually have in the meeting. Um, so, the, so the question is, is does it truly scale to what people are actually looking yeah, for? And, and in life-size conferencing, uh, you're going to have multiple cameras, which is going to complicate you know, how do you run it? Do you have an AV Correct. person there all the time? Although that's a, that may be a good thing if you're an AV integrator that supplies that talent. John, I want to stop you right there because uh, we don't have enough time to cover this this time. We're going to cover this again in two weeks, but I want to talk about Cisco. I want you to be thinking about Cisco and their impact on the uh, commercial AV space because they invented the term telepresence uh, officially, and I want to get your opinions on that. Uh, you've been watching uh, Sound and Communications Viewpoint. This is Gary Kay, and I've been joined today with, uh, by uh, John Swarren, and we'll see you again in two weeks. Thank you for watching Sound and Communications Viewpoint. And please mark January 23rd on your calendar for part two of our discussion on video conferencing.